What's up, everybody? Big Herc 916 getting down fresh out. You know how we do it over here. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, represent. Go to freshoutseries.com, pick you up some merch. I'm here with my man, True Lanes Wave. And man, we spit game talking about just elevating consciousness and having been through the system, what you can take away and utilize on your journey going forward. Um, I know you, you know, you talked about doing state time and federal time and what was one of the biggest things that you think shaped your journey forward um, going through that experience? I know for me, I met a couple of mentors in there and I, I, I made the choice that I was going to surround myself even in prison around successful people per se in, in, in thought. So I didn't engage in like conversation about like prior criminal activity. I, you know, I, I used to read like a lot of the, uh, you know, different like Wall Street Journal, um, uh, Fortune Magazine, the DuPont, Rob Report. You know, I used to walk around with that and just like that was my escape. You know, I was like, I'm not in prison. I'm like, if I'm out, this what kind of car would I be driving? Where would oh, I be yeah. living? Oh, DuPont yeah. Homes. You know, mm -hmm. I look at, you know, DuPont oh, Homes yeah. have some nice homes in Florida. I look at all the Florida, beautiful Vegas, properties. Beautiful, beautiful properties. Beautiful properties. Um, mm -hmm. What were some of the things you did to reprogram your mind so that when you got out, you could be successful? Mm, state prison was like a, 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 a reunion, class reunion. People <laughs> that I never saw in a long time, <laughs> that's where they were. We kicked it. We had fun. We did everything under the sun. It was a lot more lenient. I mean, the visiting, the... Um, the running around the yard, the program. And so I, I didn't really gain much from state prison. I actually met another person who was like a plug in the state prison okay. for me. So when I got out of there, I was able to continue my criminal activity, but in a different lane once I got out. So that didn't give me much, but then I still chose to not rehabilitate myself like I could. I could have did my thing, immerse myself in the same type of material that like you did, but I chose not to. But when I got to federal prison, it was a different level, though, because you were like um, one misconception about federal prison. Let me say this is that you believe that everybody's in there for guns, drugs, cartel crimes like that. But the mo majority of the crime, the majority of the inmates in federal prison were financial crimes. So I was able to meet some of the best people that I could have met in federal prison that I may not have been able to meet had I not gone there. I like to look at it like that because if you can meet a hundred million dollar executive CEO that messed up on his taxes, maybe Jewish, maybe Italian, Armenian, sometimes they might not want to talk to me if we weren't in the same environment. Mm -hmm, so meeting mm -hmm. them, talking to them, going to ACE classes and listening to things that I didn't know, going around people who had information I wasn't familiar with. So I'm like a hands on loner, learner. I read books. I read magazines, I read newsletters, even the Wall Street Journal, trying to learn stocks and learn the market. But going around people who actually built companies from the ground up to eight, nine figures is what taught me the most and showed me I did not have to do any of that thing that I was doing before to be successful. Here it is that I chose to be a drug dealer, to be a uh, person involved in financial crimes. I was never a scammer, never a scammer. But these guys, they actually built something from nothing, made a better way for themselves and their families for every generation to come after them, but they didn't pay their taxes because they got a little greedy. They did a little insider trading trick scheme to make an extra $30 million and only got four years. You got five years for a $12 million scheme. I so I agreed to sell some kilos. I didn't even do it. I agreed over the phone using a communication device to make a drug deal for five kilos and they gave me seven years. Didn't even do the deal. These dudes that stole a million dollars are getting 18 months and they still had the money. Yeah. Talking about, I got a heavy restitution, but my family's all right. But my point is, is that going around people who could show me what I didn't know actually going through it with me, giving me a structure of how to create a real estate business, then give everything to your property management company that you own, but you're in a background, setting up entities, financial entities, and, and, and structured business with solutions and hiring everybody else. You don't have to keep all the money. For some reason, I was thinking that all the money should have came to me when I was hustling. That's not the way to go. If you feed more people, you get a lot further, so therefore, that taught me, <clears throat> excuse me, federal prison showed me that it's so many opportunities out there. It's just up to me to take advantage of it. 
You know, um, that that in itself, as far as um, being, like you said, in that closed environment, because one thing, like I tell people even on the street, I said, um, you know, in the feds, you might be in the law library or on a track with somebody that, you know, this guy on the street was living in the hills. He went to yep. a private, com you know, gated community. He golfed at the country club that cost, you know, two quarter million dollars. He, you know, this guy drove Bentley's, Rolls Royce, private jet, but he's in here now. And, you know, being able to build that relationship or maybe get some game, it, it can change your life. Okay. And I always say, you know, information is your greatest, greatest asset. It's not necessarily money, you know, because you can have money and you, it's like people who win a lottery, they go broke because they don't have yep. information. They yes. don't have knowledge. So you, you got to, you know, be informed, but also be around people who have been, you know, lived that life so you can see. So I always tell people, put yourself in the most uncomfortable situations as far as uh, in going places where you have to dress up a little bit. You know, oh, a lot yeah. of people, they don't, they say, oh, I don't need to do this. It's not being funny style. You're not, you're not, you're not chucking and driving and dancing for these fools, but you're elevating your conversation. I'd rather be in a room where I'm maybe not the, the most intelligent person so I can mm -hmm. learn or financially well off so that I can humble myself and learn the game. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. you can't, I don't care how tough you think you are, oh, this and that. If you ain't got the financial game, and these people, obviously, if they're living better out here than you, they yeah. know something you don't know. Oh, yeah. And you never know what you can you, you can learn from. Yeah. So, you know, I always try to put myself, like I told you before, like, you know, going to some of these events where it's, um, you know, we're the minority there, you oh, know, yeah. Yeah. And, and I can... I can learn from people, and and I like making you know some of these people feel like you know they're a little uncomfortable seeing a brother like myself walk oh, around. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. See, so um, uh, uh, my father told me this, and then a few of my mentors told me this. If you're the smartest person at the party or wherever it is that you decide to go, you're in the wrong place. Here it is that you have to. I realized I had to go around people that had more knowledge and more information than me in order to change my situation. So I start finding networking groups, signing up for mentorships, and then I hired a private one-on-one -on -one mentor to work directly with me to help get me to another level. But most people won't do that because they think they know everything. Mm. When you think you know everything, you limit yourself. So I try not to talk to people who always say, I know. Everything you tell them, I know. I knew that already. I knew that already. Well, even if you did, you're not implementing it. Because I'm looking at you <laughs> yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, Your life yeah. looks like it needs some improvement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, here it is. Yeah. I'm not the I know guy. I'll yeah. listen to people. And it don't matter who you are. Sometimes, like, like I don't know a lot about um, um, cameras and tech and lighting. So if somebody's telling me about that, I'm going to be quiet and listen to them the whole way, write some stuff down and remember what they said because I just don't know about that, man. And even if I will hire them or, or, or contract them later, to help me out, at least I know what I'm getting That's right. from another person. You can't play me. Nah, -uh. he told me that this goes like this. This is the price range. You trying to work me right now? I'm not going to. Go, I'm not going to do that. So, um, there's a few times that I went over to some. It, in the Bay Area, we have some very affluent cities. One of them is called Tiburon. You mentioned mm -hmm. it earlier. Mm -hmm. So I go over there, and it's a private yacht party. I was invited by a friend of mine. He didn't even tell me where we were going. I was a little underdressed, but I went over there, right? And I met one of the most important people in my life. Mm. They're talking about business. They're talking about structure and business entities. They're talking about how they pay themselves and their family members based off of these businesses. They're talking about how even when they lose, they still win. Why am I not doing this? I have money. I'm I'm have a small business, but it's not really working for me. I'm working for it. Now, had I went in there trying to tell them what's going on, acting like I knew everything, what you think I would have got, Big Hurt? What would I have got? Yeah, yeah, you'd have got shut down. Shut down fast because yeah. they like, oh, this is a little know-it-all. Yeah, ass, yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? First of all, like I said, I was a little underdressed, yeah. felt crazy. <clears throat> I felt crazy about being underdressed. However, I was very receptive and you know, uh, forthcoming about my situation and how I got there. And they opened up to me and start telling me stuff. Now, I still use some of those resources to this day. I'm still able to use those resources because I was a great listener and a great person that they felt like they probably needed something I had, but they also were able to give me information I may not have gotten before. And, you know, sometimes by being quiet and, and, and appearing to be interested or playing to a person's uh, ego, mm -hmm. it, it it allows them to open up 
because they realize, like, man, this guy, you know, I, I want to share this with him because I feel like mm -hmm. I can help him. You know, they want to share that with you, but they want to see that you have the potential. I, you know, I got, you know, friends that I, I tell that to, and I, I say, dude, you know, please don't go in here telling them about that bullshit. Cause yeah. Dude, you, you don't even really have a nice car. So you, you can't really, you can't tell somebody something and you're not in a position, your, your game, don't even share your game here. No. Keep your game, <laughs> shut that shit down. Keep your game to yourself. Still, yep. Keep your game to yourself. Just listen to their game because their shit is at a whole nother level. Yeah. And that's what you got to do sometimes. Like I don't go in, oh yeah, man, I got a Chevelle, this and that. I'm just going to shut my mouth. This guy's got 30 cars. He's got a helicopter and a jet. So let me just shut my mouth and let me hear what he has to say because I can learn from him. Yeah, so even in prison, I knew how to leave my game out of those conversations and listen unless they asked. So sometimes they would ask like, so what's your background and where do you come from? So I would explain to them I came from Oakland, urban community. Oh, we heard about Oakland. So they kind of knew without me going into details about like everybody I know in Oakland had a fight with a cop before. Yeah. We had something called task force. Task Force come to fight. They I don't play. The <laughs> I ta remember Task Force they were throwing elbow on your back. Oh man! Task Force getting down. They jumping off yeah, the yeah, car yeah, already, yeah, yeah. ready to run, yeah. chase, fight, and yeah. then they gonna take your shit and uh. not turn it in. Money and all. You yeah, wanna yeah, go yeah, to yeah, jail? Yeah. Or are you giving me your shit? Yeah. What's up? So I'm a teenager. So I, I don't want to tell them yeah. that. Yeah. Although I've been through that. However, if they asked and I told them it, they were intrigued. So they looking. The looks on their face told me they knew that. The, it wasn't accidental that drugs flooded those communities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some yeah, of these people, yeah. like, like, I'm talking to, I'm talking about executives that know politicians that may know people, uh, like, who might have had a hand in some yeah, of this stuff, right? Yeah. Because how did a, a ton of cocaine accidentally land to, into Oakland? How did the first crack ever recorded to be cooked up? happened to be in Oakland. How did that happen? Was that an accident or you think that well, was by design? Well, even to like, you know, you know, Felix Mitchell, you go into mm -hmm. the story and you talk about politicians and people. Look, man, at a high level, which you've seen even like how these uh, these d different agencies have deals with cartels. Oh, yeah. We'll let you operate, but who's your competitor? Mm -hmm. Throw us something. Throw us something. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's how the game goes. I mean, I've, I've heard, you know, guys talking about, look, man, you know, we're going to give our partner out, but they're going to find a bunch of work and then that'll make them look good and we're going to barter over home. here. Yep, yep. That's how, you know what I mean? It's a game, man. It's a barter mm -hmm. game. This mm -hmm. game is, it's bigger than just like being out here because you're not going to be pushing through the hood and Bentleys and, and, and Lamb and they're like, oh, man, who is this dude? Oh, no. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. what? He eating mm -hmm. like that? Yes, you know, you got to, the game has levels to the game. It's levels to the game, but you have to choose your level. Again, most people in the game only hustle for survival. Most people don't make it to high levels in the game. And if you do, you're a target. And then you're a target by your competitors and the police. So here it is. You only have a chance to transition or fall, right? You transition out of the game. But they don't know business. We don't know business. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. didn't know business. Yeah. I didn't know what to do with 300 k in cash. It's under the mattress. Yeah, yeah. It's a time. Here it is that um, it's a time that I told somebody what level I was on in my hustling and what, how much work I was buying, they backdoored me. Uh, I only told three people. Now my shit come up missing. I mean, come on, man. It, it, it wasn't a mysterious job. It was an inside job. Yeah. So here it is that um, we just don't want to get caught up. Well, I got caught up because, yeah. again, I could have avoided prison, but they wanted me to work. It's no way that I could possibly work with you guys at all. I wouldn't even consider it. So I went and did my time. But... More people are being offered a way out. Give me one, we let you go. Give me three, we set you free. <laughs> Whatever the deal is, I don't know because I'm yeah. not that kind of a guy. Yeah. But I sat there all of those years, man. I missed all of my daughter's most important moments, man. They graduated high school, both of them. I was absent, birthdays, Christmases, holidays, because I chose a selfish route, which was to get money, which they were okay, and they never had to... Um, see what I actually did but one time my daughter came to visit me in state prison and she was like dad I found out why you're here I was an article in a newspaper that told me you were one of the biggest drug dealers in East Oakland and you didn't tell me and my mom didn't tell me so you guys lied to me mm. but look at how honest kids are wow I told her it was a misunderstanding they accidentally oh. got me she went and found a newspaper article on Google 
or however they found it yeah. and determined that I was a drug dealer that was doing it at a high enough level to be of interest to the authorities. But I'm only bringing that up to say that had I transitioned, I had enough money. I didn't need to keep doing that. Yeah, yeah, Everybody yeah. think I'm going to get in the game and I'm going to make a quarter million, a half a million, maybe at 1.5 and I'm going to get out. It doesn't work like that. You're not used to having that kind of money, so you'll never know what to do when you get it. Who showed you what to do with $250,000 in cash? That's right. Who showed you what to do with $1.5 million in cash, man? Most lottery in, most lottery winners end up broke 80%. How many? You know the numbers? Yeah, no, it's 80%. high. After five, within five years of mm -hmm. winning their lottery. 70% um, of athletes used to, but now they have a financial literacy program implemented in, in sports to help them not go broke. But you just handed a young man $40 million and told him to go outside. Just go. Yeah. Here's 40 M's, go. So what we don't know is what we don't know, man. And then just reaching for help, getting a mentor, or just joining networking groups where people are doing what you want to do will take you so much further. And I learned it the hard way. Yeah, I, I tell um, parents that one of the most important moves or investments you're going to make is choosing your, your child's um, junior high and high school oh. Uh, background schools, you know, backgrounds, mm -hmm. you know, because the friends you make and in, in, during that time period are so impactful. You know, you still have people now talking about high school reunions, you know, mm -hmm. hey man, remember, you know, blah, blah, blah. Remember the old girl you used to talk to, blah, blah, blah. blah. So those are a lifetime bonds. You know, you still talk to people from high school. Mm -hmm. You see them on Facebook, don't mean that you hang out with all those people, but if you have the right ones around you. And I'm not saying that, you know, there is a right one, mm -hmm. but I'm saying the likeliness of being around those where they can have an influence on you. Um, you know, like, hey, like you said, uh, the yacht party. Hey, you know, my mom's having a party over here and, oh, you want to go vacation with me and my, my family? And you're getting exposed to different, um, different situations. And I know exposure. I know when I used to sit in the pen in the feds and I'd be thinking about, man, I remember that one dude you know, his dad, blah, 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 or I wasn't this dude, and he had a yacht, man. Oh, yeah. And I'll be thinking like, damn, man, I wish I was there now. And I'll be, but I had a point of reflection where I talked to a lot of other dudes, and dude, they, they, never, they never left Baltimore. Mm -hmm. They never left mm -hmm. Virginia. You know, these dudes, that's all they had. They was big, you know, made money. Mm -hmm. But like, when I would hear their conversations, and I would keep my mouth shut, because I don't like, like put all my business out there, but they'd be like, damn, you know, um, Big Herc, what about this and that? And because uh, a couple of cats seen like, oh, you know, I was doing the little dope movie thing. Mm -hmm, and like, mm -hmm. oh, man, Big Hurt, woo, -woo you, man, you, uh. You famous. And like, you know, I said, yeah, you know, a little this and that. And they be tripping. Like, man, let's, let's walk the track. Tell me some stories. <laughs> and so, you know, I'd be told. But that kept dudes, too, from being cool. Like, mm -hmm. being, instead of being mad, be cool with me. Mm -hmm. So I'd be cool with a lot of dudes because, oh, Big Hurt, you was out there, man. You was all right. You was doing this, doing that. And um, it opened up dialogue. But like I said, is Expose going back to exposing your kids or exposing a young person, it'd give them a viewpoint because, like you said, if you've seen this and then you see this over here, maybe for a slight split second that kid would make a better choice because he did see an mm -hmm. option. Somehow you exposed him to something. So I think um, that's one of the best things, you know. And, you know, my mom, you know, she taught me a lot of good values, but I, I think later on, like, you know, if, if I would have had just a little bit more of an understanding of that because culturally w w there's such a gap, mm -hmm. you know, and kids want to fit in. They want to do things to be a part of something. And, uh, you know, majority of your time is spent outside the house. And now, what, shit, 80% of your time on the kids on their phone, 75% on their phone with yep. Snapchat and, yep. you know, X and, you know, Instagram and all this stuff. So you're trying to get, relate to all these different, you know, social media platforms. And your identity, man, it, it can be hard trying to find identity, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people's identities now are shaped by social media. They don't have their own belief systems or they change them so frequently that they never settle in one spot. So you ask a person now, who do they, who do they uh, like in politics? They don't know. You ask them uh, uh, what kind of women, ask these younger guys what kind of women they like. They don't know. They just know what they saw on social media because they don't got no game. Yeah. They don't get out there and talk yeah, to girls. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you went to a different high school, maybe a charter school that has a specific curriculum that gears you towards um, um, real war, real, real world activities, then you have a better chance. But here at my public school, it was people from all walks of life bundled up in one 
and it just was what it was. You had some dice shooters over here. You had the you had the most of the dudes had 38s in their backpack. So a fight could be a fight, but that was around a time that it was less fighting and more shooting. Mm. It was like a shooting on campus in my high school on Halloween day during a jamboree or the Halloween parade. Was, I mean, but it wasn't surprising. See, it should be surprising that a black kid shot another black kid at high school, but at, at the time it really it barely got news coverage. So I, I believe my, I had a better chance had I went to a different school. Had my mom and them sent me to Black Hawk or Danville, San Ramon schools, I probably would have made much different decisions because my exposure would have been different. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. probably would have had my business up and running by 25, 24, and I might never got so consumed in drugs where I had to go out do all of that prison time. I probably would have never ended up doing that. Plus, by you going to those, when you go to those environments coming from where you come from, oh, man, you from Oakland, no kids. Hey, man, you from Oakland, man. Hey, man, tell us some stories. Hey, man. Tell us some oh, <laughs> man, um, you, you got to meet my dad. Hey, dad, this guy right here. He's like, oh, yeah, Papa. He's like, yeah. And then you start telling him, like, dude, you should, now you're getting game. So what do you, you, you made, you did, used to do this. Well, what are you doing with your money? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm about to take your money, put over here, do this. So you're getting a, a game mm -hmm. that your parents can't give you. And I can't, you can't get mad really because, and I can't get mad because like I said, mama will give me what she knew. Mm -hmm. So if you, like you said, you, you're only going to get so much as based on what your surrounding environment. So you mm -hmm. got to go somewhere else to get the next level. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that's all part of the elevation, man. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're going to get into it. Big Herc 916 fresh out. True language, you know how we do it over here. Hit that like button.